Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, this is a video I've been meaning to do for quite a while actually. Uh, well, not really a video, just something I need to do and I thought I'd video it while I'm here. Um, and that is to recap this Mega CD. Now it has been recapped, it was uh, one of my earlier videos actually. It was uh, one of the first things uh, I did on my channel I think. Um, I, it took me a while to get around to showing it, but when I did that, um, I ordered some caps. Uh, I'll show you, They're similar to these, you know, SMD uh, capacitors. But the ones that came, they were just a bit big. Um, and there's no way you could fit them with regards to the, you know, the, the, the connections there. As you can see, they're very small. You know, it's like I think it's one millimeter. Um, it might be, I think it's two. Sorry, it's not one millimeter. It's two, smaller, two or two and a half in width or something. Um, I got the exact specs. I'll perhaps put it up there. I got the exact specs for these from the service manual. Um, rather than trying to measure them up myself, I went looking at the uh, Mark One service manual. Um, and then ordered these, I think they're all 10 microfarad 16 volts on the digital board on this. Uh, and those are the only SMD caps on there, I think. I don't think there's any on the drive. Um, but uh, yeah, so because they, they sent me the, the larger ones last time, and I just wanted to get it up and running. I didn't really have any of the 10 microfarad uh, 16 volt caps that were the, the, really the right size, even of the wet type. I just uh, pulled the little black plastic piece off the bottom. I'll perhaps show you that in a minute when I take the old ones off, and just spread the legs to, to you know mount them in a sort of unorthodox manner, really, just to get it working. Um, so it's been like that ever since. It's been like that for I don't know three years now, but it's been on the list of things to do to go back and to you know fit the right components. So yeah, I'll uh, take this apart now. I think it's, uh, it's just the screws underneath. It's like five or six screws on the six, six screws on the underside. Uh, it's looking a bit dirty there. Can you see that dust and stuff has accumulated on it? And there's the two screws here as well. So once you've got the screws out, just pull pull those two pieces apart like that, and then the top should just lift off. And just in case you're wondering, you get this little slide lock thing. It goes that way around. Can you see that? So when you come to put that back in, it just slides in there like that, and it should slide forwards and backwards like that with lock that, that in that particular orientation. So yeah, we need to get the screws out uh, for the shield in there. I think there's just two or three, it might be four, I can't remember. Yeah, you've got a screw, a screw down there, um, one over there, one here. Um, and I think it should then come off, but before you do that, you need to lift out uh, this ribbon here. Um, and perhaps the easiest way to do that actually is just to get something like a jeweler's screwdriver, if you can, uh, and just try and use that to help you lift it out because it can be really difficult there you go you've got to be careful you don't damage them um, they are quite fragile those yes yeah, so before you can get that board out you also need to take out this screw here um, it's probably worth taking out the remaining ones actually for the drive as well and pull the shielding off the top of here because as you can see it sits sorry just about it sits on top of the shielding we're trying to take off here which you know extends and goes right down here Right, there we go, so I've got the shielding off, um, you can see, um, yeah, they, they needed cleaning up because you can't get, a, you know, cotton bud under there because of the way these were mounted, but can you see that looks bloody awful, um, so I'll just be gently heating these and removing each one of these little SMD uh, caps around the board here, uh, there's about, oh, I don't know, 12 or 13 or 14 of them you can see, some of them are going to be a bit fiddly to get to because of the wires and things, I could take the board out, I don't really need to, I'm going to be able to spot, uh, you know, spot repair this really just carefully remove them solder them back on and then just wipe around with some cotton buds with IPA but as you can see yeah the, the you know they're just pretty dodgy yeah so let's try taking one off uh, this should be easy to get off because it is really just going to be a case of heating both pads uh, for a second of two if we can and then just gradually move it so yeah that's that one done you can see it's marked so that you can see that there it's plus on this side it's marked on the board so uh, I'll just get some uh, flux and some solder braid, clean up those pads, um, put the new one on there. So I've got a bit of solder braid there, let's, uh, and some flux, let's just uh, try and clean these up. Yeah, I don't, you can see that, those are pretty clean actually. Now when these had previously been replaced, it had leaked, you know, they leaked on here, that was why they needed replacing. Um, so I just cleaned up with uh, a bit of vinegar, um, and cotton swabs and things and then um, IPA you know and cotton swabs just to neutralize it and the corrosion it was dealt with it's not come back you know those pads are okay the ones that are still there they look a bit mucky like I say because they've got flux then you can't you know if I show you you can't get the cotton bud in and around <coughs> them there so that's another reason to put proper you know S&D 
components on here so the cap uh, I've got here uh, you know so it's very small I'll put the, the measurements of this on the screen uh, it's 10 microfarad 16 volts and the band the little black mark just about oh, you're probably not going to see it, it's not going to focus it's on this uh, this side of the cap can there um, that designates the negative um, so it's going to go this way up uh, and the way to do this is just get it in position roughly uh, I can't do it it's sticking to, I can have to do it off camera it's sticking to my fingers but uh, yeah get it roughly in position you know inspect the magnifier and then hold it in place carefully and just solder one side with a bit make sure you've got some flux there because that'll uh, that's the key really uh, I'll see if I can get this on camera it might be tricky so on micro here uh, yeah it's hard for me to hold this at the same time but can you see the size of the uh, you know the contacts there so that's an approximately the right position I'll need to m move it a little bit as and hold it you know try and hold it in place get some flux on this side uh, I might do the other side first uh, and then just you know as I hold it in place uh, carefully just eat that side and then I'll show you try and show you the other side if I can whilst I do it yeah so very difficult to show you uh, on camera uh, but can you see that's the sort of solder joint you're looking for there. The one on the other side just needs uh, a little bit more flux. It looks a bit of a funny shape, but it's okay. So uh, I can clean the uh, board up there on that one now. Uh, and when you get components nearby, you know, use some capstan tape or something to isolate them or just push them across. I just moved that a uh, little bit to the left there just to give me a bit of clearance, but yeah, that should be okay. So I'll just clean that up and uh, repeat for all the other caps. So here's a short progress update. You can see uh, a couple I've just done there. Uh, I still need to get a bit of the flux off this, uh, the board's not super clean, you can see uh, the one there, two over there, so you know compared to, uh, and the one over there has been done, compared to like uh, that rickety thing there, and look at these ones down here, you can see where I didn't clean the flux off, and perhaps didn't clean enough the corrosion, they look awful, the pads on those, look at that, that's terrible that one, so yeah this is long overdue, this def definitely needed doing, but uh, as you can see with a bit of patience, and some good flux, um, yeah, you can do a reasonable job. Uh, you know, I could have done a better job if we got a better iron with a smaller tip, I think. Uh, and the alignment there is not perfectly, perfectly, perfectly straight, but, um, you know, in terms of, you know, like the axis, you know, it's been straight across like that, it's just like that, just a tiny little bit, that one on the left, but in terms of the uh, position on the board, it's correct, and the right, the straight, you know, nice equal solder blobs and stuff on them, but it's the flux that makes the big difference, this chip quick flux is uh, just the ticket for something like this. So another quick progress update here, uh, third from the last you can see, uh, yeah solder points looking pretty good on uh, that one as well so I think I'll tackle that awful looking one next and then we've got one under there, uh, I think that's it actually, I think it's just those two, oh there's three, yeah there's three. I think also, can you just see here, um, it was like this when I got it, I did clean it but it's not completely gone, can you see we've got some contamination between some of the pins there, so I'll just get a little bit of IP and just brush, gently brush this, uh, this area, the side of this chip here. It's not corrosion or anything, it's just uh, you know traditional dirt and stuff that's got onto the board, uh, but you do have to watch the corrosion from some of these caps, because where they've leaked, you know, I think I did some clean up work on several places on this board actually, and one of the most risky areas is over here. Um, because you've got the uh, DRAM, I think it is, or is it SRAM, I'm not sure, for the system here, and um, it can, if you're not careful, it can eat around the connections there. It's very, very difficult to try and clean it as well because of that type, I think. Is it one of those zip-type packages or something where you've got the zigzag uh, interlaced sort of pins and stuff? It's a pain in the arse to deal with those. Um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, this board's in pretty good condition, really. Um, all things considered. And I guess the other thing to talk about here is removal of the old caps, because that's something I'm not covering in this particular video. Now, I did talk about it in my original Sega uh, Mega CD video, where I swapped out these, you know, the original caps for these god-awful caps, you know. It was marginally better. It was a black screen, actually, when I got it. It was completely dead. So it did need recapping. Um, and those caps have been on there for three years like that. Uh, well, two and a half, three years, I don't know, approximately that. Um, and it's been fine ever since, but it's just, you know, it needed to be done. But the point I'm trying to make is about removing them. In that video I talked about twisting them. You know, you can do that. Um, it's not recommended. There's loads of different ways, you know, you could use hot air. Uh, the problem is when the pins are corroded, hot air doesn't tend to work very well unless you've got lots of flux and stuff on there. Um, and you could start masking off areas of the board and stuff. Especially like, you know, look here, with this plastic connector, you'd have to mask that all off with uh, capstan tape and, you know, maybe heat from this angle. But still, 
that will heat up you know so you know just you could just use a soldering iron heat one side try and lift it gradually heat the other side you know or get, you can get soldering irons that got two pincers and you can heat both at once those are dedicated to that type of you know component removal um the other thing i do and i, I think i actually did that on mine is uh, you know say that cat wants to come off there cut it just cut into it with a pair of wire cutters and um the, the can comes off and you, all it leaves on the board is the two pins and the black piece of plastic that's normally underneath and you can just really easily remove that with the soldering iron. That's probably my recommended approach. Um, twisting them, yeah, nine times out of ten you'll do it okay if there's a lot of corrosion on there or it's a big cap and I, when I say twisting only small ones like this so you do giant ones you will just rip the pads straight off but these small ones the legs are so very 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 small on these it is quite an optimal way of removing them if you know what you're doing and I've seen people do similar things and recommend similar things on PC engines it's not something I would recommend I would say that's how I'd cut them use a pair of cutters and very carefully you know make sure you're not pulling what you know a particular way try and keep your cutter centralized and just you know crush in the middle I'll take this I'll use this crappy one here and I'll just show you if I can uh, if I just just hold it in the middle like that try and hold it straight on the board do that and then what you're left with is that just the pins and it, it just comes off dead easy um, that, you know you, you risk least amount of, or you've got least risk of damage to the board I think um, I think one of the things and the reason why one of the reasons why you get so many different approaches like that and some of these uh, unorthodox methods that people talk about is if you were in the industry day in day out and you're just using you're not fixing member mega CDs but a particular circuit board and it's got these caps that you really regularly swapping out on a daily basis you're dealing with dozens and dozens of these things every single week or every month or whatever you start to develop techniques of quicker ways of removing things and th those are typically the sorts of things you get where people go actually I found that I can just twist them off and 99 times of 100 you won't get a broken trace so in terms of you know you're in a business that's the sort of th that's where these bad practices if you like come from in general uh, and also some people haven't got the right equipment so they try and cut corners and things so uh, I'll just see if I can show you uh, another one one of these final caps here we'll just remove it so let's say heat both both pins at once um, Obviously, you're not going to be doing that if they've got the original ones on. You'll, you, you, you can still do that well. I say heat one side, just move it a little bit, wiggle it until it comes up on one side and then on the other side. But you lift the pads more often than not, so you're better off cutting them. Uh, but that's a good technique for removing um, things that are sort of surface metal where you can get access to both of the pins at the same time. So we just had a little bit of flux because. Uh, Otherwise, the desolder braids are not going to suck anything up, and there is still a tiny little bit of flux left over than before. But uh, predominantly, a little bit of corrosion there that perhaps wasn't cleaned up when I first did it. Because uh, yeah, I was rushing at the time just to get some cap some new caps on there to see if I could uh, get this thing working. Yeah, and as I said earlier, um, it was just the caps. That was what was wrong with this. That's why it gave a black stream when I first got it. Um, but me being a perfectionist, you know, it's important for me to just come back and just do a proper job with this. Really. Uh, sorry, the camera's going to wobble a little bit while I'm doing this. I've uh, got you on macro. It's uh, it's hard to uh, film and do this at the same time because now I can't look from a magnifier. I'm looking at the LCD screen here. But so, yeah, just gently make sure you don't snag a corner or get stuck on a sharp edge or whatever a bit of solder. I should just start ripping things off if you're not careful. But yeah, that's not too bad. Um, I will clean up again once we've got the new cap on there, you know, because I'm going to have some more flux on there for the new cap. Yeah, that's not too bad. Sorry, it's hard to show you this, but the other thing I sometimes do, where you can see a bit of dust discoloration, is just get a very sharp tool like this, it's almost like a, like a pinhead, and just try and scratch around that corrosion very, very, very lightly on the surface to, to bring back a, a shiny, uh, connective, you know, conductive surface just on the very edges there where the corrosion's got to it but I guarantee now after I've wiped that again stuck some more flux on put the cap on it'll look uh, you know sh good as new they won't we shouldn't see a repeat of what's happened uh, with these other ones can you see that oh you can't barely see that one under there you might be able to see the one over there a bit yeah it's uh, you know it just looks awful uh, but we shouldn't have that uh, once they've been properly cleaned up uh, like you know the other ones uh, I've done there so without a doubt, that one has been the hardest because it's so close uh, here, you know, and you just can't get cotton buds and things around it. But yeah, you can f flatten a cotton bud. I've just been flattening them in me uh, pl in me pliers, you know, to make them as thin as possible. And you can just about get down the sides here and just around the back. But you can't get all of the flux off there. But that's not too bad. That one's been done. We've just got one left somewhere. I think it's 
yeah, it's just a bit further up. Oh, if I just move you up a little bit. Yeah, and the final one is just under here. And the other thing we'll do while we're here as well, I've shown you this before in videos in the past, but you might have missed it, is if you move a cap and you don't, there's no markings on the board and you don't know which way around it came from, um, there's two different ways of looking at it. You can have caps across the supply, you know, the smoothing um, or bypass caps. So, you know, if I connect to the ground rail here with one probe, I've just taken a cap off here. If I just uh, probe one of the pads, that's the plus. Meter's doing nothing. I'm on continuity here. The other pad, you can hear, got short, dead short to one of the pads. So, if you ever get a dead short to ground from one of the pads, you know that's definitely, absolutely, 100% negative side of the cap. Um, uh, and in the other scenario, it might be like it's a, a coupling cap, maybe for audio or video signals and things like that. Um, and then it's just a case of look, trying to follow the circuit and work out which side is like, you know, if it was near an edge connector going to some sort of connectivity, work out which one's going to the connector and which one's coming from, say, a chip or a transistor or something. Um, you know, and obviously the, the, the side that's going out is your negative and the side from the transistor or the chip or whatever's driving that signal. Is going to be your positive, uh, but yeah, I'll clean uh, clean the pads up with some flux and uh, just hold the braid and then get the final cap on. And there we go, that's the final cap. So uh, all done, ready to reassemble. As you can see, got a bit of Terminator up there, uh, all reassembled and uh, working fine. Hopefully, you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.